Uh, good morning. My talk is about discordance in twin uh, pregnancy. I'll be going through the various uh, stages from embryo to birth. Uh, this is a systematic review of several studies or approximately 30 studies uh, looking into embryonic crown rump length uh, discordance. Before 10 weeks of uh, gestation, CRL uh, discordance is highly related to uh, loss of the, the twin. If there is more than 20% uh, discordance in the size of the embryos, there is a high probability that there will be a vanishing twin. And uh, this is true before 10 weeks of gestation and the critical cutoff is uh, uh, 20%. Now we go to the nuchal scan or at 11 to 13 weeks uh, uh, scan. Uh, it is not infrequent to notice uh, discordance in the size of the fetuses at this time. Uh, size discordance at 11 to 13 weeks is a terrible uh, predictor of adverse uh, pregnancy outcome. Uh, the optimal cutoff at this stage of the pregnancy is uh, at 40%. It should be at least 40% because it has a high uh, sensitivity, uh, it has a poor sensitivity, and that means a very high false uh, positive rate. So the, the message is that we have to be very cautious in relating the result to the patient, be optimistic as much as possible, and just to uh, monitor the fetuses. This is the National Institute for Clinical Excellence or the NICE guidelines from the UK. This uh, guidance is based, uh, it was based on uh, 30, less than 20 studies and somewhat le fewer number of pregnancies. So this is just an uh, um, expert recommendation. And they uh, recommended the scans at least uh, every three weeks yeah. and to consider delivery if there is a discordance in size of uh, more than 25%. Uh, this is a, a large uh, cohort, uh, the twin, in, twin pregnancies in the UK. And this is based on the data that is linked to the uh, registry. This graph shows the uh, discordance, size discordance in relation to the perinatal mortality. So the green line shows the uh, discordance in birth weight when the, the fetuses were, were born. And the uh, blue line is the estimated fetal weight discordance based on ultrasound. And as we can see, they are more or less related, which means that we can rely on the ultrasound in the approximation of the uh, discordance and also as a prediction of uh, uh, perinatal uh, mortality. And another uh, uh, finding in this study is that chorionicity did not independently influence adverse perinatal outcome in twins. In this graph, it shows the importance of the um, looking at the, the different amounts of uh, discordancy to, to see what matters most in the survival of the pregnancy. The upper line, uh, shows the discordance from 5 to 20%, and the green line uh, showing a crush in the uh, survival curve is uh, discordance showing, it shows a discordance of uh, 25%. So with this uh, data, um, the cutoff of 25% uh, discordance is uh, somewhat uh, a good recommendation. So uh, the, here is an algorithm in uh, classifying the degrees of severity, degrees of severity of intertwin growth discordance. If there is a difference of uh, 50, less than 15% discordance, which is uh, uh, found in 75% of cases, this is somewhat minimal or no discordance and uh, it's not clinically significant. When there is uh, uh, around 15 to 25 uh, discordance in the size of the uh, twins, which is uh, 
uh, around the 20% of cases. This is classified as uh, mild to moderate discordance and therefore warrants uh, increased uh, fetal monitoring. Uh, more than 25% discordance uh, is around five, in around 5% of cases is uh, classified as severe discordance and this is due to placental insufficiency. In a study in uh, uh, 2017, uh, they showed a breakdown of cohorts in different levels of gestation and the um, optimum uh, discordance that uh, between the babies that is somewhat related to perinatal mortality. Uh, they uh, showed that at 28 to 36 uh, gestation, the optimal cutoff uh, is at uh, 40%. And at 31 to 33 weeks uh, gestation, the cutoff is at 20%. And advancing in pregnancy from 34 weeks to 36 weeks, the uh, optimal cutoff uh, was at 15%. So as the pregnancy advances, the less tolerant the babies are to uh, discord court discordancy. So one explanation is that... Uh, if we compare a, a term baby to that of a small baby in the second trimester, a term a big baby has a high metabolic demand and therefore there will be a short latency to demise. And uh, uh, fetal growth restriction is rarely seen because most of them, most of the stillbirth and uh, fetal death at uh, a term are AGA babies or appropriate for gestational babies. In contrast to an early uh, placental failure in a second trimester, wherein a small baby has a low metabolic demand and therefore has a long latency to demise and can uh, survive for several weeks. And of course, the, the cardinal feature is a fetal growth uh, restriction. So uh, an expert opinion mentioned that um, at the... Uh, uh, advantage of pregnancy, we should consider uh, a low cutoff for, for these uh, pregnancies. And also we have to look into the Doppler assessment uh, or the cerebroplacental ratio because the lower the birth weight, the higher the proportion of fetuses showing signs of redistribution or the percent, uh, preferential redistribution of blood flow to the brain. According to multivariable regression uh, analysis, uh, Doppler assessment or only cerebroplacental ratio uh, measurement uh, significantly showed an association with perinatal death or perinatal mortality. So um, this is a study showing a combination of estimated fetal weight and uh, Doppler assessment in predicting perinatal mortality. We should not focus more on fetal size, but uh, uh, we should focus less on fetal size, but we should focus more on, on the fetal well-being. Um, the graph showed that the combination of the uh, fetal size and the Doppler assessment has the uh, best detection rate for perinatal mortality and lower false uh, positive rate which is um, uh, unlike in singleton pre pregnancies. But in twin pregnancies, this is uh, much more predictive, the combination of the fetal size and uh, doctor assessment. So a timing of birth in twin pregnancies is also important because twins have a 340% increased risk of dying before, during, or shortly after birth compared to singletons. Here is a data of a large, uh, a large data of a Japanese study showing uh, the increased risk of uh, uh, stillbirth or, or fetal death in among twin infants, uh, which is the blue line compared to that of uh, singleton pregnancies. Another data showing the uh, increased risk of uh, early neonatal death among uh, twin infants. This is also from the large data from the Japanese study. In uh, 
study of 25,946 twins, they presented this uh, crossover graph. The uh, blue line is the decrease in uh, neonatal death as the pregnancy advances. And the um, uh, red line is the increased risk of stillbirth as the pregnancy advances. And the crossover between uh, the, the crossover in a dichorionic pregnancy is at uh, 37 weeks uh, gestation. For the monochorionic twins, the crossover is at uh, uh, 36 weeks of uh, gestation. So uh, in conclusion, it is uh, advisable that we should uh, deliver monochorionic twins from 36 weeks of gestation and dichorionic twins from 37 weeks of gestation. It is also safe to attempt vaginal delivery, both in uh, monochorionic and dichorionic twins. And that um, the more preterm the pregnancy, the greater the degree of intertwin discordance that is uh, tolerated. Thank you.